Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. The choices we make today can will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. It, it really is. It matters. It's important. And, and we want to begin to thrive and do really well. So this show's about that. It's about helping you. It's about encouraging you and getting you to the next level with your health. Because at the end of the day, that's what we want to see. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you do well. That is a big, big deal. So no matter what you're struggling with, remember, you can always get better. It's about the choices you make. Foods we eat, air we breathe, water we drink, exercise we get, stress we manage, relationships we keep, and the rest that we allow. All those are key because the people around you influence you. You're, you're a sum total of the five people you hang out with the most, the way they think, the way they act. All that gets into you and gets around you. And so you have to be cautious with that. It's very important to get the right people around you. Let's go to the phones and talk to Lee. Hi, Lee. I'd like to discuss um, narcolepsy and cataplexy and any alternative medicines that uh, might be available or some strategies of coping with it. Narcolepsy is a, a challenge, no doubt about it. You've got to figure out exactly what's, what's causing it, though. That's one of the main reasons. You've got to jump in and figure that out. So you, it's, narcolepsy is one of the big deals. It, it's... It's one of the, it can be some deficiencies in the body. There can be some serious brain issues going on, uh, heavy levels of stress. Nar- sometimes with narcolepsy, it can be the brain's subconscious way of coping with stress. Matter of fact, a lot of times that's what it is. So if you've gone through a lot of stressful situations, let's say you're kind of a see yourself as more of a tough cookie, you can kind of go through and plow through anything. Narcolepsy can be a, a, a mechanism the body just reacts with by shutting down. That's how people can just fall asleep right in the middle of the stoplight, driving and out, right? Somebody's honking at you behind, getting, and it wakes you up to keep driving. And so stress is one of the big ones. But I would get some testing done, sleep studies done. And, and then nutritionally, there's quite a bit you can do. The stimulants, you don't want to really do too much of. It's more about the consistency of the brain based on the nutrition that you're giving it. So that's one of the bigger keys that can that can make a difference there. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Whatever you're struggling with, remember if the body can get sick, you can also get well. That's the key. Millennials, now here's what's happening with them is in the job force. Interesting. Job dissatisfaction in your twenties or thirties can undermine your health by midlife. But really rewarding work pays health dividends. Those who are in average very satisfied versus Versus satisfied tend to have better health in their 40s, said study lead author Jonathan Durham. He's a doctoral candidate in the Department of Sociology at Ohio State. By their 40s, disenchanted workers had worse mental health. They were more likely to suffer from routine sleep issues and anxiety uh, than, than others. Seth Kaplan, who's an associate professor in industrial organizational psychology at George Mason, he said, we know that there are some major job-related factors that contribute to poor psychological health, but according to Kaplan, who wasn't involved in the study, having an abusive supervisor, not having control over your work, or having to worry about losing one's job, and corresponding financial repercussions are among the big ones. So you've got to be really careful with that. And roughly 45% consistently expressed how low job satisfaction. On average, Durham said that the reflective relative dissatisfaction rather than the outright dislike for their work was a big one. So overall physical health is a direct reflection of what's going on in the workplace, okay? So if you, whatever job you pick, whatever you do, whatever you uh, end up going with for a career path, you've got to make sure that it's producing great health for you. Health issues can lead to lower level of job satisfaction all the way around, but it's going to impact your health. That's the deal. And that is always the deal. That you have to look at. You gotta be cautious of that. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Whatever you're struggling with, remember if the body can get sick, you can also get well. If you haven't found a lifestyle provider, check out our website. And you can find someone that can help you all the way around to get you to the next level with your health and your life. Children, sugar's a big deal. But they say children and teens should consume less than six teaspoons of added sugars a day, a new American Heart Association statement advises, our target recommendation and the same for all children between 2 and 18, to keep it simple, really for everybody. I mean, adults, we shouldn't be taking in the sugar at all. Not like that. Most most children eating no more than six teaspoons of added sugars a day is a healthy and achievable target. 
So that's one of the things. And in Atlanta, Emory did a study on this. Uh, they said the statement also said children younger than two should not consume foods or beverages with added sugars at all. In addition, children and, and teens, 2 to 18, consume more than eight ounces of sugar-sweetened drinks a week. You know that's not happening. Not in the South. Okay? That's a big deal. Eight ounces a week. Think about the, the 16 ounces of sugary drink that your kids are drinking every day. And think about the amount of sugar that is and what that's doing to their health. It's amazing. Statement was published recently in the Journal of Circulation. It's based on a review of, of scientific research on how sugar affects children's health. Regular consumption of foods and drinks, high in added sugars, can lead to high blood pressure, obesity, and diabetes. So children who eat a lot of loaded uh, added sugars tend to eat fewer healthier foods, such as fruits, veggies, whole grains, and, and that sort of thing. Been a lack of clarity on that, but they're really pushing it now, which I think is important. Got to get down on the sugar with their kids. It's a, it's a huge deal, and it's making a dramatic impact in their overall health and, and what's happening with their health all the way around. 888 Hey, if you haven't checked out our clinics yet, the Center for Lifestyle Medicine Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two is the number. It is, and we'd love to hear from you. Now, one of the keys that I hear a lot, and this is one of the kind of one of the hang ups people have in losing weight, is they don't know where to start. And I, I think that it, it's one of the big deals with, with dropping the weight is hitting your goals, but you got to know as, as far as exercise, is that more important? Is the eating more important? Where do you start? I think you really start with this. The one question we always ask people, whether we're coaching them or they're in our clinics and we're working with them medically, whatever it is. If we're talking to them, one of the keys that we ask is what is your goal? What's your target? Okay. What's your target? What are you shooting for? What's the target? And if your target is you don't know, then you'll never get there. If your target is 125 pounds and you weigh 200, then you can get there. But the target has to be number one. The eating habits, the exercise, the, the lifestyle choices every day, that can fall in line. But knowing your target is the key. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. We're here for you. No matter what you're struggling with, remember, you don't have to be stuck where you are. Sometimes you need somebody to coach you, to help you, to lift you up, to push you to that next level with your health and life. And that sometimes is not that hard. You just got to have somebody that can walk with you along the way. Let's get to the phones in just a moment. But I want to get into something real quick. I want to go, you know, dogs are really, really important. And I think one of the big keys that we have to realize, I talked to a lady the other day that yeah, her dog's all she had. She almost lost her dog. It, it, it ate something wrong and, and really went through a, a, a tough time neurologically. Had to go see the to the vet hospital, right, emergency care, 
almost lost her dog. And here they heard her tell the story. It was like she was losing her child. And dogs really play that kind of role in, in families. And they, they, they become that family member. And so I think one of the big keys you got to look at is how important they can be. And autism has become so prevalent. I think, I think it's been around, but we definitely are seeing it more now than ever. But they're saying now you've got a lot of stressful days, right, with autism, a lot of challenges as a parent. And research is suggesting now that a dog can actually provide parents a lot of relief. They did studies in Britain, and they followed families of children with autism that actually had a dog. And they found significant positive relationships between parenting stress of the child's main caregiver and their attachment to the family dog. So Daniel Mills, who's a professor of veterinary behavioral medicine at the University of Lincoln, said this highlights the importance of the bond between the caregiver and their dog and the benefits they gain. Stress associated with parenting a child with autism continued to decrease among dog owners over time, but we did not see the same reductions in families without a dog. And this long-term follow-up study highlights the potential benefits of pet ownership and bringing long-term improvements in the lives of families living with a child with autism. Stephen Feldman, who's executive director of the U.S.-based Human Animal Bond Research Foundation, said parents of children with autism can experience increased anxiety and stress. That's obvious. But now they have strong evidence that shows that pets can have a positive effect on the quality of life and the issues all the way around. He suggested families dealing with autism consider pet ownership as a way to improve the fa- overall family harmony. I think it's a great idea. And not only that, I mean, the study's great. This, this is all in the Journal of Veterinary Behavior. But we know that for a fact that can make a difference in people's lives. It really can. So the, the animal and even a pet, and, and dogs are really great. This I'm sure cats and all that can do the same thing. But dogs just bring a lot of value. They just, you know, man's best friend, woman's best friend, that whole concept. But it is. I've seen it, I've seen it in so many patients and so many people that it, it's made that much of a direct impact in their life, and it really is is great to see. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. If you're looking for a provider, someone in your area that can help, we've got our lifestyle providers that can jump in and help you there. Let's get to James on the line. Hi, James. I was diagnosed with diabetes two and a bunch of other disorders. Okay. So it, let's just focus, I guess we'll focus on the diabetes then with you. That, diabetes is, I think, is one of those health challenges, and, and we're learning now in, in medical science. It's one of those challenges that can really be overcome fairly easily, especially if it's caught early. Then you can get the body and the pancreas, which is the little gland system that produces the insulin. You can get that working better again. You can really get in, support it, give it the nutrition that it needs, the help that it needs. So it's just about learning how that works. And of course, the blood testing and all that's really important. But diabetes, here's some of the basics. Okay, I would I would definitely encourage you to get someone that knows what in the world they're doing in nutrition. Okay, that can can guide you and and give you the right the the right show you the ropes with that. I think that's important. So having that is is a big deal. Here's the deal though: with diabetes, you want to do multiple meals throughout the day. You don't want to have long stretches without food. Got to have the right amount of food coming in on a regular basis just because your body needs it, okay? And the stabilization of your blood sugar depends on it. So each meal needs to comprise of a lean quality protein like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then good healthy fats or almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados. You want to have a little bit of everything. Everything needs to be in balance. Everything needs to be kind of together in that realm. And if you do that, it can really help all the way around. And and again, you can use different supplements. You can use cinnamon as a supplement or just sprinkle it on your food. You can use alpha lipoic acid and chromium picolinate, vandal sulfate. They've they've all been shown to be to be helpful with blood sugar levels. But it's your consistent eating patterns that's going to make the biggest difference. That's what you want to really shoot for. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have enough of that that it that you that you get everything you need. I mean, that is, that's the ultimate key when, when it comes to it. 
And what you don't want to do is is do something that is is going to 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 be a challenge. And and I'll tell you that with diabetes it is not having enough food and and again uh consistently throughout the day like having big gaps. Okay? That's one of the the big deals you've got to be be cautious with. And once you get everything balanced out, diabetes is not that tough. It's not. It's one, it's one of those deals that once you start getting diabetes at the end of the day you do everything right but if you're inconsistent that's not going to give you the results that you're looking for triple eight two eight three seven two seven two remember you don't have to be Time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality Keto Chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto Chow tastes amazing. So make Keto Chow easy for you and your family today with Keto Chow. Let's go chow. Visit Keto Chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Lives are open, 888 so glad you did it. And check out the website. We've got all kinds of articles there, too, so if you miss something on the topic... You can put in a topic and look it up and figure out exactly what's going on. If you want to look up something about high blood pressure or diabetes or losing weight or anti-aging, making your skin look better, whatever it is, you can look up all that and figure out exactly what's going on with your health. You don't have to just be stuck. You can. That's what we, we want. We want to be that resource for you to be able to to really thrive and and really to be able to do well. We want to help you. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we we're here for. We're here because we want to see you do well. We want to see you crank it out in your health. We want to see you really hit your goals and understand that you don't have to be on this path by yourself. We're on the journey with you, and we want to help. We want to get you, get you, get you where you need to go, take care of your health, and you know, mentally get you where you need to go because the mind drives everything, and we want to help that to stay as focused as possible. There's a new thing in, in behavioral health, and I, I'm real big on that, okay? Behavioral health is a big piece of what we do. That's why I call it America's Health Coach, is because behavioral therapy is so important. And, and giving people what they need, listening, talking to them, encouraging them, and helping them along the way is important. So there's a, a new type of therapy called talk therapy. And the researchers found the so-called behavioral activation therapy treats depression just as well as cognitive behavioral therapy. So this, this so-called behavioral activation therapy is provided by mental health workers with minimal training and is significantly cheaper, the study authors contended. So behavioral activation therapy is what, that, is what that's called. Cognitive behavioral therapy is provided by highly trained and highly paid specialists in many countries. CBT is available only to patients who can afford it or who have health insurance and, wanting, and waiting lists can be long. For example, in the United States, only about one-fourth of people with depression have received any form of psychological therapy in 12 months. So the use of behavioral activation treatment can improve depression patients' access to talk therapy treatment and reduce long wait lists. Researchers' result published recently in The Lancet said our findings challenge the dominance of CBT 
as the leading evidence-based psychological therapy for depression. It's kind of cool. This was all done at the University of Exeter in England. Study recruited 400 adults with depression who were assigned to receive either behavioral activation therapy or the cognitive behavioral therapy. So the cognitive behavioral therapy is what's been used for a long time. That's, that's the, the typical scientific approach we've used to help with depression. All right. When you go talk to a therapist, that's what that is. Okay. One year after the start of therapy, about two thirds of patients remained in both groups, 50% of depression symptoms. Treatment costs for patients in the behavioral activation were 20% lower than those in the cognitive group. So behavioral activation is an outside in treatment focuses on helping people with depression, change the way they act. And treatment helps people make a link between their behavior and their mood. It's kind of a cool thing. Richard said in the study that the findings suggest that behavioral activation could increase the availability of psychological therapies, both in the rich and the poor. And in addition, the newer therapy could also reduce the need for costly professional training. It's kind of a cool thing. So these people aren't as, as they're not quote unquote trained therapists as much. Training's not as high and it's not as heavy. But obviously their their ability to create change in people is what's making the difference. So that's that's a big deal. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two is the number. You can give us a call or go to the website. Let's go to Silva. Hi Silva. I'm calling about a um broken bone. Uh, ankle specifically um, that is not healing. Um, I've been trying to get it healed for a little over two years now and getting ready to have a rod put in it um, and hopefully um, some kind of a healing agent that the doctor wants to give me um, to heal it up. So Here's the deal. There's a couple of options, all right, when you're talking about the bones and, and healing and, and getting everything where it needs to go. Your nutrition is going to play a huge role. Matter of fact, the, fra- the, the bone itself being broken is probably due to poor nutrition over a long period of time. Now, that's a thought. It is, it is a possibility, okay? So getting the bone to, to, to kind of heal and, and to do it in the best way possible, minerals play the biggest role. Number one, you've got to figure out your vitamin situation with vitamin D. It is the catalyst. It's kind of the head. He's the head honcho, I guess, of the whole situation. And, and he's, he's the catalyst that makes all the minerals work. So things like magnesium, boron, calcium, these are all utilized by how much vitamin D is in the blood. So if vitamin D levels are up in the tissues, then the minerals will be utilized. If it's not, then they won't be utilized as much. So that's, that's a huge piece of it. Is, is managing and making sure that you've got everything you need there. Uh, but that's that's one of the big pieces. And, and again, therapy-wise, you want to do everything you can. Weight-bearing, it depends on the type fracture, and I have to see the angle of it. But whatever they're telling you to do, you want to do that. Physical therapy is going to be important, too, because you want to have a, some form of rehab is important because you want to build up the muscles around the joint to support the bone regardless. So that is a huge part of the healing that needs to take place, and I would I would look at that because that, that, that plays such a big role all the way around. Now, the other thing that you have to look at that's important, and, and this does, this, this plays plays a big role, it, it, it really does, is you have to look at making sure that you've got some type of laser therapy. If you've never done it, Ask your physical therapist about it or orthopedic that did the, that's working with you. Because the healing process with the laser is amazing. You can almost cut the healing time in the bones in half. depends on the type of, of fracture and it depends on the displacement and all that. But the healing from a laser, these FDA-approved lasers are pretty amazing. They're, they're low-level lasers and they can go in and they get tremendous results. So it, it's a great way to go. Just look into it. Ask them about it. And see if they have that in their practice where you're going. And and ask if you can utilize that as part of your therapy treatment. Because, it, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the, the benefits people are getting are, are pretty pretty awesome. 888 is the number. You can give us a call. And if you haven't 
found a lifestyle provider, someone in your area, you should you need to find someone in your area that can help you really begin to thrive with your health. That's what we want to do. Let's go to Jacob. Hi, Jacob. I've got cancer in my lip note, and uh, they're saying they found spots on my lungs. I had good news the other day that I have gained three pounds. Uh, the, the cancer is uh, shrinking. I'm on a Herbitux uh, um, chemo, and the chemo is like burning me up, and, 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 and you know, I'm having a lot of uh, side effects from it. Um, I have, uh, you know, bad bowel movement. Uh, I, I uh, you know, uh, get constipated. And uh, anyways, you know, uh, I, you know, I've got to take a, I need, you know, take a lot of fiber. And, and you know, I'm listening, you know, I, I need to get, probably take a lot of fruits and what have you. But I still, I don't need to be on some kind of diet where uh, I'm staying, you know, uh, I'm not gaining weight. Well, true. I understand what you're saying. The, here's the deal, though, Jacob. One of the things you got to understand is, kind of the thought is in in a lot of these treatments is eat whatever you can to get the calories in right like you just said to me hey there's good news i gained three pounds and that is great news but it, there's a big difference in the qual your quality of nutrition is everything for these cells see the cool thing is about the body is it regenerates every single day each day old cells die off new cells form and the way god designed the body is is just amazing so if if you're giving your body really high quality nutrients, organic foods, tons of greens, tons of vegetables, tons of fruits with all the different antioxidants, if you're giving your body everything it needs, then it can have the opportunity to produce good healthy cells. If you're just eating a bunch of junk because it's got high calorie, you're not giving your body the best opportunity to make good cells. So there is a difference. And one of the things always, if your appetite's not that strong, make smoothies. All right, get a big Vitamix blender. They're amazing. And you can use nut butters because nut butters like cashew butter, almond butter, they have great properties to them. They're very beneficial. They're very helpful. And it really, at the end of the day, you can mix in greens, a good organic protein powder. You can add like an, like an almond milk, coconut milk. It's got great benefits to it, tons of calories. And each shake you make could have almost 1,000 calories. So rather than drinking, drinking a bunch of sugary drinks that's suggested a lot of times in the hospitals, I'm not going to name any names, but instead of doing that, you know, if you really want to build up your calories and do it in the right way, you make your own drinks. That's the way to do it. And you're, you're being in control of the nutrition because you can put spices, you can put turmeric, you can put cinnamon, you can put all the stuff that needs to be in there and make those smoothies and really start getting in the nutrition that your body needs. That is a better way to go to give your body the the elements that it needs to really begin to thrive and really begin to do well because that at the end of the day is what will make the difference and again you want to give your body every opportunity to produce health and when you're fighting against something like cancer at any level and you're taking chemotherapy and you're taking all that you got to give your cells some kind of shield for, to protect the good cells for what's there right and so talk to your Talk to your oncologist about it. Maybe get an oncologist nutritionist to get on board with that. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com.
know this. Know that God will carry you through. He's the same on the highest mountaintop as he is in the deepest valley. And he will always meet your needs. Maybe not in the way that you think he needs to, but in the way that he will always do. Because that's just who he is. He is the great physician. At the end of the day, he's the one that you go to whenever you're in the toughest time of need. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Pre-washed salads may need another rinse. New article on WebMD. And this is so funny because we, we hear about this all the time, but it's true. Washing off your salad and those bag salads that you get at the store is so important. They did a consumer report and they found that the bacteria is higher than ever in the packaged green salad. Those pre-washed, triple-washed, bagged green salads, they're finding massive amounts of bacteria, specifically with E. coli and salmonella. They just did a, a recent contamination check from the uh, Consumer Reports and the Consumers Union, and they found that these pre-washed and triple-washed bag greens contain more bacteria than ever. So it's something that we really need to consider when you're thinking about that. So when you get those bags of salad at the grocery, make sure you dump them in a strainer and wash those off very, very well because they're containing high levels of bacteria, fecal bacteria. That's kind of gross, but you think about it. It's true, and it is what it is, but make sure you protect yourself because those nasty little bacteria, of course, can do really wreak havoc on your overall immune system. And make sure you're taking anyway on a regular basis. Just because we're still in some of the, the flu season, you want to take vitamin C, of course, high levels. But ionic silver is really important too. And astragalus. Astragalus is very, very good for your immune system. And vitamin D. Vitamin D, get your blood test done every six months to see where your vitamin D level is. You want it to hang around 70 on that blood test. Let's go to Will. Will, welcome to the show, my friend. How can I help? Yes, thank you. Uh, could I wonder what your take is on eating by blood type? Okay. Dr. Diadamo, right? Yes, and yes, also it, uh, Joseph Cristiano. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the eating for your blood type, both good guys, by the way. Uh, no, no, both of them. But eating for your blood type has some, some good research behind it. And here's the deal. The body wants to be in balance all the time. That's, that's the goal of the body. That's what it wants to shoot for. So when you, when you say the different blood types, such as type O, can handle more meat products, and type B and, and the type A can handle different, you know, more, more of, the, of the grains and more of the carbohydrates than vegetables, then it's, there's, there's research behind it. However, the validity of it, I'm a bigger fan personally of seeking for the body to be in balance. That's the key. So proteins, fats, carbohydrates all need to be in balance, not one heavier than the other and not one taking up more caloric intake each day or over the other because your body needs all those nutrients every day, regardless of what your blood type is. Your body needs an equal amount of all those nutrients to function. You need essential amino acids. That all comes from proteins. You need essential fatty acids which comes from your healthy fats, the omega-3s, 6s, and 9s. And then you need your carbohydrates for energy, for your brain, for glucose, and for muscles. So that's really how everything is broken down and how you need to look at it. So as far as the blood type goes, will you digest certain foods better than others And because of your blood type? I think if this is my opinion. If you stay in balance with your food choices and eat the right kind of foods and you stay off of foods that create a lot of inflammation in the body and stay with the grains and most of the dairy except, except goat's milk dairy and you follow the principles that are laid out in my book, Empowering Your Health, because of the food groups, I think that's the best way to go. That's why I put it in there. If I thought the blood type was the best way, I think it's more, it's it's selective is what I think it is. And I think that it's, it will, will it give people a good guideline? You're not going to go wrong if you follow that, meaning I would rather you follow that than just trying to wing your own diet on your own because the principles in there and the different food choices that they pick out for most people are pretty darn good. I'm a, I'm a fan. But as far as the overall principles being the golden rule for what you should be eating on a regular basis, not so much. All right, thanks for the call. Charles, talk to me. About a, two and a half weeks ago, I come down with a rash. I'm, uh, I say a rash. I'm itch. I'm itching. Okay. And uh, I tried to do some deductive reasoning. I thought, well, it was it was started like about three weeks ago. Is it neuropathy? Neuropathy, yes, sir. 
Okay. And right. uh, I thought well, it was one of the medications that I hadn't gotten before when I was down there. I've got about uh, nine, eighteen. So nine, is it is it nine, now the rash itself? Is it is it coming out in one area? No. Or is uh, I, well, I'm trying to do some deductive reasoning, but today I was out mechanic and I, I went. My neighbor invited me for lunch. We're, we're closing out right now in this hour, Charles. But I'll tell you what, if you've got a neuropathy, it's probably a B6. Now, the rash itself, if your body in the beginning stages, when you get started on the anti-inflammatory diet, and depending on what your situation is, you want to talk with the physicians there at the clinic. But I, I, what probably is happening is you're pushing out a lot of the yeast-related infections, potential bacterial infections, and that rash sometimes is normal when the body starts pushing that out. Wormwood is very good for a situation like that. You probably want to take a a couple of days off and fast. That's always a good thing to do to let your body kind of cleanse and detox. Thanks for the call, my friend. Puts another hour in the charts. I'd like to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, Leslie Pardue, and the rest of the team. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. Go tell one person something you learned on this show, and together we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the best in healthy talk radio where we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. You can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.